Hi, I'm Candace with Slusher Consulting, home care consulting specifically, non-medical home care is my specialty. So I want to talk today a little bit about reporting. In some states, these types of reports are required. In other states, they are not, but they are always best practice. They're always a good idea to uh, capture the information that you need to run an efficient agency to provide good customer service and also great client care. So let's just real quickly touch on these. Complaints. We don't like to admit that we get complaints, but sometimes even little complaints are a true complaint. Gripes, annoyances, the kinds of calls that make your staff roll their eyes, but also the ones that give you anxiety and if you wonder if you're doing things right and you can't sleep at night, right? So you want your clients to not only be satisfied, but to be happy, well cared for, and to get what they expect to feel like they're getting what they pay for if it's private pay or the care that they deserve and have coming to them if it's an, um, you know, if it's an insurance client. So when they take the time to call you or send you an email or fill out a client satisfaction survey, even with a negative score, they are telling you, you told me, or I expected that I was going to get this and I'm not getting this. They're engaged in your agency. It's important to listen to them, to validate what they're saying. And that needs to be recorded or document, documented, even if it's just documented so that you can say, look, see, this woman calls every single day with a complaint. Fine. Then that's information that you have now. Um, sometimes a complaint is actually an incident. Uh, sometimes a complaint is just a conversation because somebody's bored today. So either way, Make sure that you're paying attention and capturing those. Complaints are a gift. Um, incidents. An incident or occurrence, people call it different things. Really anything that's out of the ordinary, not covered on the client care plan or service plan. Um, so falls, medication errors, whether the caregiver forgot to give it or the client even forgot to take it themselves. Those things need to be reported. Um, a fall, even if it's a controlled fall, somebody will say, well, she didn't really fall, I slid her to the floor. Well, is that in the care plan? No, then it's an incident, right? Most of the time, your clients don't belong on the floor. <laughs> uh, so that needs to be addressed. How did it happen? How can we keep it from happening again? Um, was there an injury? Sometimes there is, sometimes there's not. Um, you know, episodes of behaviors with somebody with dementia, combative or aggressive behaviors. Maybe they don't have dementia and they're combative or aggressive. You need to know that. Um, incidents could also be, or complaints could be abuse, neglect, or exploitation. And if that is the case, you always want to follow up with your state regulations, but also make sure you're protecting your clients and that you're reporting that to your local adult protective services so that uh, someone can advocate for them. You are advocating for them when you do that. Okay, so an incidents can be anything. It could be something broke, um, an elopement if somebody is wandering off, it, it, you know, all kinds of things. You just want to capture that information. Infections. So for clients specifically, any infection is important to know about. Is it a urinary tract infection? Is it a respiratory infection? Or a skin infection from maybe a skin tear that didn't heal up? Um, all of those infections need to be reported. For staff, you generally only need to report communicable diseases like COVID, TB, even the flu. Uh, check CDC for what's listed as a communicable disease. Um, for client satisfactions, uh, I think it's important not only to, to do it at least once within the lifetime of your client, but ideally at least once a year. There are some people who say, well, we do client satisfaction every single month. That can probably get annoying. You might just want to figure out what your client experience is in regard to doing them too, too often because you might just find that they're not giving you real information. They're just hitting the button or saying, yeah, 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 so they can stop it. Um, you want those to be quality, not just quantity. So there's that. Um, look, I'm a nurse. So if it's not documented, it's not done. And I've done videos about documentation before, but there's really a little more to, to it. For if you, if you have to do quality assurance performance improvement or QAPI, then these reports are, are your data. They are the way you're keeping up with your services and how things are going and you know what you can do better. If you're not required to do that, still a good idea, by the way, um, then still, this is a good way to tell the client's story, to provide really great customer service, 
um, because because you can tell the client story. So if say somebody comes in from out of town who's visiting the client and they call and say, you know, I noticed this, this, and this, and this seems like it's not okay. You might have reports that you could go back and say, actually, this is normal for her because this, this, and this have happened in the last year. And of course, that's only if they are listed, but like a family member who's out of town. Um, really, transparency is what we're looking for. We are aware that we're not perfect and we're addressing it. We are taking efforts and steps to train staff if something goes wrong, um, to make sure that our clients are protected if they need to be. Um, but also there's the, the what I call, if I get hit by a bus type of theory, right? If, um, you know, if a client's family calls and makes a special request and I didn't document it anywhere, or if there's been a couple of, of incidents that weren't documented, then when something bigger comes up, we may not have that story to tell. But if I get hit by a bus and I knew about these things, then uh, whoever answers the phone the next time or has to address it following up, if I knew about it and I didn't put it on a report or I didn't document it anywhere, you don't have access to that information now. So not only is that poor customer service, because I would have obviously dropped the ball, you can't even pick it up and run with it because I didn't report anything. So transparency, I think, is important, especially if there's multiple people running your agency. And really, even if you're a sole owner operator, there should be some sort of backup um, that needs access to, you know, what's going on with your clientele because you always need a contingency plan in case an emergency happens. And yes, I've had people say, why would you say if I get hit by a bus? <laughs> what if you win the lottery? But honestly, if you win the lottery, it takes like three months to get your money. I have plenty of time to share information if that happens. But if something urgent happens and I'm not available, I don't want my clients or my employees or my company to suffer at all. So everything needs to be documented somewhere in a centralized system. I hope that this is helpful for you. Um, again, if you have reporting requirements through your state regulations and standards, then you're going to want to follow all of their recommendations. But even if you don't, it's a good idea to keep track of what's going on. If somebody's not happy, if something out of the ordinary happens, um, especially things like falls, and because that can protect your agency should somebody come back and accuse you too, right? And a lot of it is just CYA. Thanks for watching today. Like and subscribe. Appreciate ya.